Meso here from IPR with the latest on subtropical storm Andrea, which has developed off the southeast coast of the U.S. Taking a look out there right now, you can see Andrea uh, getting its act together a little bit. It has this big gap in the center of the circulation, and the actual low-level center is on this side. We'll take a closer look at that. You can see it's still connected up with a very unseasonable pattern. It, uh, the third earliest storm ever to form before the hurricane season, but it has happened before. It's not a first-time thing. It uh, Unusual, well, these things happen every once in a while. It's nothing uh, new uh, in the weather community. This type of stuff happens, and this is subtropical. It's not a pure tropical system. Probably won't become a tropical system. You can see a lot of convection all the way back towards uh, the Caribbean and the Bahamas associated with the outer band of what is now tropical, or I'm sorry, subtropical storm Andrea. There's the latest on subtropical storm Andrea, and you can see winds are 45 miles an hour. You can have gusts up to 55. Gusts seem to have weakened from when the system was up here when it was uh, still extra tropical. They had gusts up to hurricane force, very high surf. Moving to the west at 3, and this general motion uh, from the hurricane center is expected to continue and move southwest and then generally dissipate just as it nears the coast of Florida in about four or five days. So we could be dealing with this for a couple of days, but the track is unknown. Anywhere within this circle is uh, where it may go. It could head up and make landfall in South Carolina. It could make landfall in South Florida. It could head back to the Bahamas. It could loop around. Uh, that's pretty much what uh, the possibilities are with a system out of season like this and very weak. You can see the uh, radius of uh, tropical storm force winds with Andrea uh, extending out a little bit away from the center, mostly on the east side. This is kind of lopsided, and uh, it really has shrunk in size, uh, which is a sign of it getting better organized and why it is now a storm. Recon was out there checking it out. Of all the storms that have been within 600 miles in May that have ever been tracked, uh, this is within 600 miles of Andrea, you can see that most of them have been all over the place. I mean, up and down, and sideways, and looping, and that's pretty crazy. Looks like a bowl of spaghetti. We'll look at the models. Same exact thing with this uh, tropical cyclone. So there is a uh, there is a little bit of a concern that there's no no real uh, determination of where it's going to end up. You can see the track right now is off in this direction. A lot of the models are heading towards the south, which is where the hurricane center is. Climatologically speaking, uh, it would probably make landfall and move on off to the north and northeast, but there is a blocking pattern, which I'll show you in a minute. Either way, uh, this is going to be within this area for the next several days, uh, which is good news for the wildfires that have been occurring in uh, north Florida and south Georgia. However, uh, there is so much dry air associated with this system, and it shrunk in size that even though it may uh, sit around for a while, we may not get that uh, heavy rain. You can see right here is the system on water vapor imagery looking rather puny compared to uh, the visible. Look at this shot of dry air coming in here. This is very unfavorable for the system and very bad news for those who want the moisture in Florida because the most moisture you see right here is right around the center and then well out in the Atlantic. This is the pattern we've got. We've got an upper feature up here. We've got a, a upper feature developing that is kind of embedded in with the tropical storm. And then you have... Uh, high pressure to the north that's causing this blocking pattern which is why this system is not going to push on out and it's also why the Midwest has been getting battered with flooding rains and very severe weather because this pattern has not let anything push out uh, you know we always see these trough this troughiness moving off the East Coast well now we have it basically stuck in the Midwest and this tropical system not being able to pull away from land uh, because of this blocking pattern. So if this keeps up into the peak of hurricane season, which by the way we're not even in yet and we're already dealing with this, if this keeps up into the peak of hurricane season, then we may very well have storms that are not able to turn out and end up heading uh, towards land and into the Gulf of Mexico. So that is a that is a concern, but of course we got a lot of time to watch that. Looking at the latest visible satellite loop, you can see Andrea here continuing to spin and the forecast track from the Hurricane Center on that. You notice here when it started, the convection was very much on the eastern side earlier this morning, and it has since started to wrap around a little more. 
and uh, the motion continues right off towards the west, generally towards Georgia. And again, this track may have to be shifted further to the north, further to the south. Um, and keep in mind the timing with it, too. If it moves faster and further north, it is inland very quickly and uh, probably makes landfall in Georgia.